What's up, Barbarians? So let's hop right into it. One of the brand new builds that people are talking about is the new Ramalandi's Opus Lochran's Talisman build, which can, of course, complete all content. But this season, let's be honest, most stuff is pretty easy. It's just, are you willing to put in the time for it? So for starters, let's go ahead and show off some gameplay. This is going to be for the Infernal Hordes Tier 8, but ideally you do want to be farming Tier 7s, although this build is quite good at doing Tier 8s. However, just like a lot of builds, don't expect to one-shot the bosses as they do still have some HP. So for starters, what is essentially new here versus the other Whirlwind Barbarian build that we uploaded previously? Well, there was some sort of bug discovery, and I'm going to go ahead and go over this really quick, uh, as this is important for this variant of the build. Heck, we were actually playing this earlier in uh, the PTR. We actually had Lochran's Talisman as well. You guys can see here in the gameplay. Uh, this is back when Crown of Lucian was actually good uh, before they decided to go ahead and nerf it. Now, there's something very important that you have to see uh, that is very important if you want to use this build and you are going into new zones what happens is there is some sort of glitch and interaction and what you have to do on every single zone and shout outs to Dagon for finding this out um, you actually have to unequip an item your Ramalandis must be unequipped and then re-equipped because there is a bug with it. I also do it in the gameplay only on the bosses, though. Um, you will have to do that because currently it doesn't register uh, the, like, resource correctly, especially with Lockrins. And that's uh, part of the build. So, just as a heads up, this build is not viable right now in the pit unless they fix it because, well, in the pit you cannot swap items. So, comparing this to my uh, other variant, which is the 100k Life Barbarian build, which is, like, ultra tanky, if you guys want to play that one, that one is totally okay. This one will get more damage, but it does sacrifice survivability. It is up to you on what you want to play. I'm here just, just, just to show you guys the different variants. There's actually a couple different variants that I've seen people talk about and play. There's actually uh, Rob's variant over here where he's actually running a uh, two-handed slashing, and he's using heavy-handed because obviously, well, you're going to be running a two-hander here. However, there is maybe some unintended interactions with the Ramalandi's Opus, which is part of the build, because it does say skills using this weapon which means that it would have to be on the two-handers, which in uh, the case of the other player that was running it, which was Dagon, he's running this on the two one-handers. So which one is better? That's up to you. You can find out which one works the best. It could be just some sort of bug that's like unintended, but nonetheless, in the gameplay, I'm using uh, the two one-handers. But if you want to use the slashing, that's fine. Go with whatever you want. So uh, for starters over here, as far as the skills go, let's go ahead and go over that first. So it's going to be kind of like your standard Barbarian, Triple Shouts, Wrath of Berserker, and then you have your Iron Skin. You also uh, happen to use Whirlwind to proc all of our damage. Whirlwind itself does not deal the damage, but what it does is facilitate the ability to generate Dust Devils. And then for the technique, we're going to be running Two-Handed Axe just for more damage. And then as far as the pieces of gear goes, uh, and if you're wondering, does this build function without Ubers? Sure, but it's going to be a lot worse without, of course, getting the Ubers. But it's not like you have to have them to function for the build. It's not like an Andarial's build where if you don't have it, the build doesn't work. So ideally, you get these towards the end, but you want to run Harlequin. Ideally, you can get a cooldown, but it's not really super important on this build. You do use this specifically to uh, Armor Cat, but cooldown reduction is kind of the thing that you want to get. But if you don't get it uh, in terms of master working, don't worry. It's not like the build just falls apart if you don't happen to have it like the sorceress builds and then we're running tyrials you can get damage reduction or the plus maximum to all res and then uh, we're also running fierce winds here or if you want to run fist of fate that is another option you can go for crit strength those are all good things that I have and then uh, also getting some sort of sources of damage while berserking in a few different areas will let you reach the maximum amount of value that you need for one of the things on the paragon board which is like a, a, a multiplier of 30 that's all you're really doing with that and then we're running to balls to get even more resources is because this build uses Opus and the Talisman like we did in the PTR, uh, except for I didn't play Devaults. I felt like the build was too squishy with it, but it will give you more damage. This is not required for the build, but it is there as more damage. And then in the boots, you can run whatever aspect you want, but ideally getting strength is going to give you the most value here. And then uh, we also want to run the Dust Devils aspect in the two-handed mace department, and we want to greater affix transfer Dust Devils to cast twice. Ideally, you get this three times. If you don't get it three times, well, then the build will actually do a significantly less damage because this is your chance to basically deal double damage in the build. And then we also have the devilish aspect. Now, this is where it becomes a lot harder. This is why I would suggest most players to actually play the uh, 100k life variant because that one's way more tanky and it's way more beginner friendly. This is more so for people that really want to min-max, but if you don't hit this, it's not like the build, again, doesn't work. But the reason why is because you swap one of the other swords that you normally would run, or you can run a mace, um, 
with uh, the opus and you can't temper on that. So you lose out on a bunch of the multipliers because the other dice double size. So that's why you want a triple master work on this. Uh, and then ideally you can get the uh, damage while berserking if you can, but crit damage is totally fine as well. Then we run Lockhorn's Talisman. If you do not have a GA1, it's probably better just to get a regular amulet. In fact, I would want to say that the build is totally fine without Lockhorn's. Uh, opus is going to give you way more numbers in terms of stats, like how much it actually gives you. And you do want to make sure you get a good Opus. A bad Opus determines like if this build is actually runnable or not. So Lockhorn's over here gives you a bunch of maximum resource. It used to give you, basically, it's... It got nerfed divided by five. Like, it was a huge nerf for its special power. It basically grants you extra critical strike chance per bonus of primary resource you have. And then each point of primary resource above 100 grants you some crit strike damage instead. So the more resources you get, the more damage you get. And basically, you get to kind of do it doubled because Lockhorn's Talisman gives you uh, resource itself and it gets a bonus on resource. And the uh, Ramalani's Magnum Opus also makes so skills that use this weapon will uh, deal up to 0.5 increased damage per point of fury you have, but you lose 10 fury every second. Don't worry about losing fury per second. It doesn't really affect the build at all. You can see there's zero resource problems. So uh, you basically, the more resource you get, you get way more damage and it's on two different items. That's why it's really hard to get this build to be very good because you need to get those GAs and of course master working on like let's say Tabalds or even Lockrins or um, Harlequin over here also gives you maximum resource. So that's another stat if you want to get instead of cooldown reduction, it, technically it's more damage too. So uh, again, it's kind of open on what you want to go for. But I honestly prefer the cooldown reduction Harlequin because you get more shouts. More shouts equals more uptime on your Wrath Berserker, which is uh, more damage. Or if you want to play Call of the Ancients, that's totally A-OK -okay as well. But yeah, Locker and Salesman, you'd ideally want to get a G8 one. If the uh, crit percent isn't perfect don't worry about that that's not like the biggest deal the uh better thing that you're actually trying to scale is the maximum resource on it then of course star of the skies you only really go for the critical strike chance um lucky it isn't really that bad either because uh you apply vulnerability with uh your ring to get a chance to make enemies uh, vulnerable so crit strike chance and damage are both good things to get ideally just try to make sure you get enough crit to where you get basically 100 percent crit which is not too difficult on barbarian honestly and then Grandfather, this is the reason why everything is kind of like geared towards crit. Grandfather, good weapon. And then Opus, we've already went over this. Ideally, you get greater advocates on maximum resource or even crit. Those are the two good ones. Uh, if you want to, you can get it on strength uh, or overpower. But the main thing that you guys have to factor in, you want to get a 0. 0.5. If it's not 0. 0.5, just toss it away. Don't worry about the rest of the stats on it. If that isn't good, then the item sucks. All right, then for the gems emeralds rubies and then if if you need to swap anything that's fine but Tyrios is going to max you out in resistance and harlequin gives you armor anyway so uh ideally uh, the reason why this one's over here is because before like getting concussion was like totally fine and if you didn't have it i guess yeah you'd want cooldown reduction on a regular helm but ideally harlequin and then you want to masterwork uh every single stat is pretty good except for armor because you're barb so uh, don't worry too much about that i just put the uh little star there because that will fix your armor in the game and you should not really need these but if you need these that's fine it's not a big deal uh at the end of the day because you don't need resistances because materials as far as the skill tree goes the first few points don't really matter at all make this bigger for you mobile viewers no problem uh shout out to you guys but uh the first again few points don't really matter then we get whirlwind and then we want the one that actually inflicts bleed because i'm playing the two one-handers uh, it doesn't really matter too much you can also apply bleed other ways but i like running this just applies bleed and then uh we're also running pressure point this is how we're going to be applying vulnerability in addition to our ring and then uh we are also going to be running martial figure this is kind of like standard bread and butter but this thing is actually really important because we drop a lot of survivability so a lot of builds will run tactical but strategic is actually really good if you want to put some points into iron skin it's fine it's kind of like an uh, optional free skill there's a lot of free skill points as you see right here i'm going to talk about the other things that you can invest into but basically uh there are some extra points so if you do want more damage war cry we can actually go to edit here and then uh, we can put them in as we go along i'm going to give you guys some suggestions as there are a lot of you know optional ones now it depends on uh your rolls on gear like did you get greater affixes on your uh movement speed because it's really good with whirlwind to kind of move faster if you want to apply bleed here that's another option but over here you can max this thing out and you can get even more damage so that's one option you can also get extra movement speed and uh then there is also extra damage reduction if you want to fill out this that's totally a-okay and then uh going towards the bottom here 
So if you want to run a mace, wallop is okay. You don't really need attack speed in this build. If you want to run the slashing variant, then heavy handed is good. If you want more survivability, you can run invigorating fury and then boom, we're done. So there's a lot of options uh, for the last few kind of skill points. Uh, I just kind of showed where I, I could put them in. But again, if you are running uh, a bludgeoning, which is going to be a mace and then opus, cause you run two one handers, then you'd play that. There are again, several different variants and I actually think they're all good. Um, I actually played around with uh, both different variants, but if you do play with the two handed sword, then run might instead of uh, one of the other ones which we're going to be talking about in the Paragon board, which is uh, ambidextrous. So keep in mind, you're going to have to factor that in, whatever you enjoy, or maybe like what item rolled good that you could just kind of want to mess around with. Again, uh, Opus says skills using this weapon, but that could be fixed in the update that we're getting later today with, of course, the new season PTR, and I'll update you guys on that. So uh, for starters, as far as our Paragon board, we start off with Exploit, and it's going to be our good source of Exploit in the very beginning, and then later we're going to be able to, of course, uh, apply it with our ring. Then we're going to get as much fury as possible. You can see we're going to take all the extra bonus fury nodes because that gives us more damage. So Warbringer Ire. And then we also have a Bone Breaker with Wrath over here. We're going to get this extra HP. And then we're going to get more. Uh, we get a little bit more points in this one because, well, we want crit damage because Grandfather is amazing. Then we get Carnage with Ambidextrous over here. There's also this other node, which you really don't need to take for this build, but it does give you extra attack speed. Uh, sometimes for some skills, depending on if you want to play Leap or not. I actually kind of like playing with Leap instead of Iron Skin just to make some content faster if you're doing Nightmare Dungeons or whatever. But if you want to, you can take that. Like, Charge is a really fun skill too. If you want to swap out Iron Skin, there's a lot of things that you can play. And some of the stuff makes it a little bit better, but that's just another one just as a note. Then we have Blood Rage with Marshall over here. This is how we basically have our shout up and we can constantly shout um the other build that drops the uh the generation of twisters with shout if you want to you can swap this one out too and then twister with decimator you want to actually get a lot of points into this one because it's like 39 uh points per increased damage over here with uh that so uh, that pretty much wraps up the build in terms of the differences uh, with my previous build. If you have built the previous build, check the Paragon board. It is definitely different. And uh, also check the itemization because it is going to be a lot different. The difference between this being a casual build and a more, I guess, hardcore, like 1% mid-maxer really comes down to specifically the master working. I would really suggest if you're more of a casual player, check out my other Barbarian Whirlwind build guide. That's, it's like 100k life, which is ultra tanky. And it's a lot less strict on specifically this. On this build, if you don't get that chance for Dust Devils to cast twice on your two-handed mace, and you get triple masterwork, if you don't get it and a, and a good roll, then you do suffer significantly in damage because your other weapon, where normally you would then get some other bonuses, uh, and you can put this on something else because it's more lenient, because that is your big source of damage, remember. Whirlwind does not deal the damage itself. It's the Dust Devils. And when you lose out the chance for it to cast twice to be at basically 100%, you will lose out on damage. Now, do I have perfect rolls in my gameplay? No, but I want to go ahead and check it out as it was a build that I kind of played before in the PTR and, and people were talking about, they're like, hey, are you going to make an update to your Whirlwind build now that a lot of people are playing uh, Opus and Lockruns again? Because I originally had Lockruns in and then I took it out because they nerfed it, but there is a bug with it and hopefully it will be fixed. You can see in this gameplay, hold on, this is actually one of the most important things where we actually remove the item and we actually, uh, here's, you can see I'm taking it out. And I'm putting it back in. You see, I don't, I don't even need any of like the gems because I'm already like capped. But yeah, this is very important. Remove the item. And you can see my rolls are not perfect on it. You want the, the triple mass working. That's what's going to get you up there to actually kill the bosses much faster. But you have to do that specifically on the bosses. By the way, the bosses will not die in like one hit. It will take, uh, you know, it'll take like a minute or two to get the bosses. And we can just fast forward like 20, 30 seconds here and then yeah, a minute or two here. And you can see you will be able to get all of the content done. Ideally, if you can, I don't think, I, I tried to do it here, but this is another tip on the boss for like a lot of builds. If you can, usually there's one melee one, try to drag it to the corner and then that way the twisters can hit them multiple times. Because these twisters, I mean, they got a mind of their own. They're not going to be homing targets like the uh, the Wernado Werewolf. But if you can try to put them in, in a corner or towards the bottom, that way the tornadoes can kind of hit them more times. Try to do that. But if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Anyways, that's going to go ahead and wrap up things. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like on it. If there's any suggestions for this build going into season six now, uh, Feel free to get, let me know down below because uh, we are actually getting some buffs to Whirlwind again and maybe we can finally make a true Whirlwind build because every Whirlwind build, let's be real, it's all Dust Devils. But 
maybe next season we'll get him. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed it, drop a like. If you're new here and you want to see an update to this, as well as other builds, we got a lot of cool things cooking up for season six that I can't wait to show you guys. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. And check the pin. All the links will be there. Or if you're watching this TikTok, it's a link in the bio.